I want to pass it over to Al Mitty, who is one of our co-coordinators for the World Beyond War Illinois chapter, which is hosting today's event. So take it away, Al. Uh, thank you, Greta, and uh, thank you, Marion, especially. But uh, thanks to all of you who are joining this event, and thanks to Chuck uh, Lederman for uh, organizing this thing and and uh, ha having this occur. Um, I also want to thank the uh, the other. I'm I'm a serve as a, have the honor of serving as our co coordinator for our Illinois for a World Beyond War, which is the Illinois chapter of uh, World Beyond War. Um, and along with me as co coordinator Daphne Agason, who's just put her I think put her name in the chat somewhere. She's here and. Uh, and so, we, and we also have uh, Madonna uh, Wotazak uh, Healy with us, and Julie Watkins should be joining as well. And Chuck Lederman also serves on our steering committee. So we're we're pleased. We, on behalf of the steering committee, we thank all of you for uh, joining this uh, this event tonight. Um, I want to say that our organization is is relatively new. Um, and we are devoted to kind of three core areas. One is education, education about peace and the end of militarism and the end of war. Uh, and then secondly, advocacy that we want to advocate uh, for public policy, advocate before Congress, adv ad advocate before uh, decision makers uh, to bring an end to war and prevent war and to reduce militarism and end all of this stuff that's been going on perpetually. Uh, and then lastly, a, a third area of focus for us is to track uh, the media and monitor what's going on with the media, because I think we all know that the media seems to seems to be pro-war uh, and we have to search out for the the full truth and we have to search out for alternatives to uh to media to get the truth and we have to hold the mass media accountable for the kinds of things they're saying and sharing with the with the general public so we we will have a chance at the end of the meeting and, and we're not cutting into marion's time because she is the focal point here but for those of you from Illinois, if you would uh, want to join us at the very end of the meeting, we're going to say a few things about our chapter um, specific to Illinois. Uh, we hope you will join for that portion of the segment of the of the meeting. Um, but uh, that's optional for everyone. Uh, and I will now turn it over to Chuck Lederman, who helped bring this about and uh, take it away, Chuck. Well, it's an honor to be with all of you with, uh, I can see my wife on the deck downstairs. I can see a former member of the steering committee who's now in California and a couple of familiar friends. And, uh, but I wanna give you a little beginning of who you're about to hear from. Uh, when I asked Marion how she wanted to be introduced, she said only to share that she's a political activist and that she is. It to me is the humility with which she's sharing here, which moves me so deeply. As who you are about to hear has a richness of lived experience, which cannot be easily expressed, whether it be in an hour long webinar or a day together. If you wanna marinate more deeply into who she is and has been, she's written two books, the Hands of War and the Hands of Peace. She's lived through the horror of the Holocaust in Hamburg, Germany, the horrendous bombing of that city at the end of World War II. And then if, if that wasn't enough, the horror and disappointment to discover that the United States in all its glory reminded her of some of the oppressions she personally experienced and those which African Americans were experiencing in this country. And it's what she chose to do with this awareness, which also moves me. And I believe is important for us. As she chose to try to do something about these oppressions, rather than give up, become disillusioned and cynical or anesthetize herself. 
I discovered Marion in November of 2023 in a Democracy Now! podcast as she and her husband Daniel were standing day after day outside the White House protesting the war in Gaza. And I might add, she was a little uh, betwitched because she and Daniel had just come today from having done the same. This is not a past enterprise. At 88, still making decisions to do what she can do to fight the injustices of the world. And it's to this spirit that I invite you to give a listen to a wonderful human being who can give us possible ways to live life with meaning and to learn from the horrors of war to use one's life towards peace. So welcome, Miriam. Thank you. I would like to thank you uh, for your participation in the world beyond war. Next, I also thank World Beyond War for inviting me to share this Zoom meeting with you. Third, as WBA requested, I implore the UN General Assembly to invoke Resolution 337, <clears throat> Uniting for Peace, for Peace in Palestine. And fourth, I assume that almost all of you share my alarm and resistance to the despicable genocide in Gaza, which threatens to trigger unprecedented worldwide death and destruction. For eight months, Daniel, my lover for almost 68 years, and I were in front of the White House protesting that horror. More days than not, we were the only ones protesting. And many days, we also protested at the Israeli embassy. In fact, tomorrow there will be a big demonstration at that embassy. That included days before and after Excuse me a second, I just messed up. Okay. Just, uh, we had met Aaron Bushnell uh, about a week before he immolated himself in uh, desperation because he couldn't think of anything uh, that he could do to uh, protest uh, and uh, bring an end to what he could considered to be a horrible uh, slaughter of human beings. Uh, we talked to him. He did not indicate in any way that he was uh, disturbed. Uh, um, we were both uh, very much unhappy and disturbed by the fact that uh, at the point when we were talking, uh, almost 16,000 children had been killed by Israel. And uh, we both agreed, and Daniel as well, uh, that uh, killing children can never ever be considered uh, an act of self-defense. Uh, children are uh, the innocent uh, victims of uh, warmongers. Uh, and we discount the fact that uh, children if they survive, might grow up to become uh, fighters uh, in a war or hopefully fighters uh, against war. But what is happening now is uh, really uh, very uh, unsettling. By the time we uh, had joined the several like-minded protesters in our Message had been spread to many millions around the world via countless interviews by foreign news entities, social media purveyors, and three interviews on Democracy Now! After eight months, Daniel and I interrupted our vigil for me to speak to 5,500 German students about war, 
peace, the Holocaust, and the relevance to Israel's and America's unholy atrocities in Gaza, which I think is what I was supposed to speak about today. So much has been said, shown, written out, that one might think that there was not much else to say. But so much has been emphasized, covered up, repeated, ignored, twisted, and copied that I will add a few words as the last survivor of three of mankind's greatest horrors, the Holocaust, the bombing of the civilian section of Hamburg, uh, which was uh, an operation uh, by the Allies called Operation Gomorrah, designed to intimidate the German war machine by killing civilians. In a four hour period, uh, about 60 to 80,000 people were murdered by bombs, were killed, uh, most of the people killed were not uh, members of the German army. They were civilians. Many of them, uh, I'm um, quite certain, were Nazis, uh, since almost all people uh, at that time subscribed uh, um, to that. And uh, the bombing lasted 10 days and 10 nights. Uh, as a pacifist, uh, it is ironic uh, to me that I was saved by uh, the greatest uh, bomb attack uh, in, the, in the Second World War. Uh, it was uh, the greatest firestorm the world had ever seen was the other element of my uh, uh, three atrocities and of course the Holocaust, the bombing and the firestorm. The bombing uh, did nothing uh, except make Germany stronger. The Allies thought of it as uh, a revenge bombing, thinking that civilians uh, will alter uh, the course of the war, and of course it didn't. And uh, so it is with that that I, uh, I with that I grew up, and uh, it is now known that I'm the last survivor uh, in of this atrocity in. Germany. In the many times since before the words Holocaust and genocide used to describe the Nazi horror, I have been encouraging collective action to promote, to promote peace. And many times in the past 10 years, I've been terrifically encouraged by the passion and ingenuity of the response of young people and academics for example, in Japan and in Germany, historians, teachers, and students in Germany and Japan have been especially eager to learn from my family's experience as Jews and Gentiles in Germany during and after World War II. As a leading Asian historian put it, if we fail to study the history history of Europe in the middle of the last century, just written a paper about uh, Holocaust survivors in the civil rights movement. And she used my experience in her paper, which she was presenting in New York while we were uh, in Germany and while I was talking to German students. I began to write 
to write about that history after I came to New York City on a student visa in 1952. My purpose was to calm the horrible PTSD I was experiencing at the same time that I was enjoying my first sense of freedom. But that joy was soon diminished by the shocking realization that racism, like the oppression European Jews had experienced for more than a century before and after the Holocaust, was currently oppressing minorities in the so-called land of the free. I had to leave the propaganda of American democracy and was more than surprised to the city herded African Americans and Puerto Ricans into ghettos. And I was really angered to find that most employers only employed them as janitorial or sanitation workers or occasionally as elevator operators. I resigned a part-time job at an advertising agency when I learned that an African-American woman could only work in the so-called ladies' toilet. When I protested, the head of the company said he was only following, quote, industry practice, end quote. He also said Southerners were the only real bigots. This was around the time of the so-called Emmett Till case in which two Southerners were allowed by an all-white jury to walk free, even though it was clear that they had tortured and murdered a young African-American boy from the North who was said to have winked at a white woman. Joanne, the woman who worked in the ladies' toilet at the advertising agency, and I became friends and I learned a lot more about racism in New York, including the fact that no landlord would rent us an apartment to get it. She would do so if my friend host as my caretaker. Although I spoke with a foreign accent, no one asked or seemed to care whether I was a Jew or not. But my mother was fired from a job at Allstate Insurance Company when they learned she was a Jew. This hurt, but despite its sins, the Big Apple was a cultural feast for me, especially after my mother moved to California and I was on my own. I worked at the Museum of Modern Art and made art and participated in multiple ways in an especially creative period for art ballet, opera, music. One of the little known milestones on Germany's road to Holocaust was the Nazis' adaptation of America's racist laws and practices. The Nazis envied the American, envied the way America was respected as the main democracy while cruelly oppressing African Americans. So the Nazis sent a group of lawmakers to America to study and adapt America's successful racism. The result was the Nazis' enactment of the 1930s uh, Nuremberg laws, which paved the way to industrialized mass murder that we popularly refer to as the Holocaust. If it had not been for the courage of a doctor at Hamburg's Jewish hospital, I would have been one of the early victims. He disobeyed a new Nazi rule that prohibited the hospital doctors from helping newborn Jewish babies uh, to breathe in case they were, had trouble. Several years later, Nazi stormtroopers attacked my father tied him to a lamppost uh, and tried to force him to leave his Jewish family. Uh, they beat him until he was almost dead and the beating uh, eventually 
uh, killed him because it ruined his kidneys. He was forced to go into the army. He was sent to, Brus to Belgium, to Brussels, uh, with the Luftwaffe, where he was uh, assigned to a procurement unit in Belgium. My father was a member of the communist underground, along with uh, all of uh, our family's friends. They were all part of this underground. But my father broke with uh, uh, his communist friends uh, uh, when the Hitler-Stalin pact came to be. Uh, and he then said that he couldn't be part of that. My father is my uh, role model. My father in Brussels, Belgium, uh, uh, did not uh, stop uh, his underground activity. In fact, uh, for a long time, I thought when, uh, that his arrest, he was arrested, uh, was because of his underground activities, but it turned out something that I learned from historians, uh, I think three years ago, was that my father was helping Belgian Jews escape the Nazi net. Uh, many of these uh, people he saved went to the Belgian Congo. When my father died, many of the people he had saved uh, many Belgian people he had saved came for his funeral, which I thought was uh, quite a long trip to make uh, to to be present and something that uh, makes me feel very happy that that occurred. And uh, so my grandmother was my grandmother was a singer was taken uh, from me uh, the night before I turned six years old. Uh, my mother had hidden her in our apartment. She was supposed to have been killed along with my other Jewish family members, my beloved uncle, uh, who had taught me to read when I was about three, three and a half. Uh, my uh, aunt, my beloved aunt Emma, who was my uh, grandfather's sister, but was a very uh, progressive feminist, and therefore I idolized her uh, progressive thinking and her uh, non adherence to what was considered to be proper female behavior or something. So I really loved Aunt Emma a lot. Uh, and uh, so all of my family was uh, taken on the 8th of November in 1941. My mother hid my grandmother in our apartment, but apparently someone uh, knew about this and we were ratted out. So as I already said, the night on the 18th of November, the night before I turned six, uh, they took my grandmother. Uh, I kicked one of the Gestapo in the leg uh, as hard as I could. Uh, he picked me up by my uh, throat and the other uh, Gestapo told him to let me down. The last words uh, my grandmother said to me were that uh, I had to be very brave and that I had to be very courageous and that I have to also listen to what my mother told me to do and that that was very important. And that was the last time I saw my grandmother. I can, I, I, uh, uh, can go on and read some more, or I could just talk about things a little bit more, or we could uh, go to question and answer. My arrival in, in 
New York City on a student visa was uh, a liberation for me in as much as I became very, very quickly involved in the civil rights movement. Uh, it allowed me to uh, work against injustice and it allowed me uh, to be part of a group of young people who wanted to change the world and make the world a better place. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh, the uh, civil rights movement was the, the liberation uh, for me because I was able to put into practice uh, some of the things that I felt uh, I needed uh, to do. I, uh, then I was, uh, I was not allowed to go to school in Germany until after the war ended. But uh, fascism and the Nazis did not end with, uh, with the war, it continued. And I, when I was finally allowed to go to school, I arrived in, uh, in a situation that to me was even worse than uh, all that had preceded it, all of the bombings and the terror and the loss of family and the hiding, that uh, my teachers were Nazis. Uh, the school children were the children of Nazis. Every uh, subject uh, in a school day, uh, the teacher uh, tell me that I was incapable of uh, intelligent thought, that I was incapable of learning because Jews were incapable of uh, of any uh, cultural merit and uh, that I, I was in effect subhuman and that Jews were uh, incapable of uh, producing writers or philosophers or scientists, things that I knew not to be true. I wanted to go to school since I was two years of age and my playtime was always, uh, you know, my dolls were, uh, the students and Monica, a uh, girl uh, about my age who lived in the same apartment building, and I played school all the time. She was also a pupil. I was always the teacher. So uh, I, th I thought school was very important. Monica told me when I was uh, probably about three and a half, four, that she would no longer play with me because I was a dirty Jew pig. But I digress. In school, my teachers terrorized me with their anti human, anti Semitic uh, attacks. Every time I had a great big red X on every page, and underneath would be written, oh, I can't read it. I begged my, my father uh, to take me out of school. School. And I said, I no longer want to go to school. I never, ever want to go back to any school. And my father told me that he would let me, uh, he would take me out of the school if I stood up and explained to my teachers what I have been complaining about to him about my uh, school uh, attendance. And I was very upset with my father. And I told him, you know, it's your responsibility to look out for me. It's not my responsibility to fight for myself. It, you know, it, it's, it's you and, and my mother's responsibility to, to go to the school and tell the school that they had to desist on this horrible treatment. And my father said to me that as soon as I stood up for myself and explained to my teachers 
where they were wrong, he would take me out of the school. And he said, you have to learn to stand up for yourself so that you can always be ready to stand up for others. And it is important that life includes being uh, present when others uh, are in need. He also always said to me, if you are hungry and you have one slice of bread and you meet somebody who is hungry, then uh, you're obliged to share uh, your slice of bread with that person. I believed it, but I was very angry at my father and I you know, almost hated him for making me have to battle adults and but if you know one day it was especially horrible uh, on my way to and from school the uh, kids would uh, spit spit on me or you know sometimes hit me or uh, throw things at me and of course always call me very horrible names but all of that is in the past and all of that is also why I am uh, a fight, an activist for peace and an activist uh, against injustice. I, uh, my civil rights activities took me to Mississippi. Uh, I promised Fannie Lou Hamer that I would go to Mississippi. Uh, uh, and I kept that promise and I went to Mississippi and I, uh, I thought I was going and, and I did. Uh, to register voters and uh, then was also told that I was to run a freedom school. I ran a freedom school. The Klan uh, burned a cross in front of my freedom school. And when I got to my school, I doused the cross and I wrote freedom on the crossbar and it became uh, the opposite of, of what the Klan intended it to be. So instead of a hateful uh, emblem, it became uh, a talisman of love and uh, the opposite. Uh, the Klan uh, terrorized uh, civil rights workers and uh, the bravest people in Mississippi were the Mississippians themselves. It was not us who went to Mississippi because we were all able to leave. It was the people in Mississippi, especially the women who housed us and fed us and risked their lives to uh, keep us safe and fed and, you know. Uh, and so my admiration for for them is boundless, I, uh, and, I, and I continue to be in touch with them. Mississippi was also important because I, I lost all of my natural family, but I have made so many other families. I have a Mississippi family, and I, I'm grateful for my phys, uh, my. Uh, Mississippi family. I have an Italian family and I have uh, at a minimum uh, many, many thousands of young German students who are all of my children or my grandchildren or great grandchildren, depending on their ages. I have been going to Germany for the last 10 years to talk about peace and uh, trying to tell people to young people uh, to connect with young people all over the world to form uh, a global peace movement. It is my goal to uh, encourage young people to connect with one another uh, so that, you know, they can help us get out of the mess that has been created by uh, people who prefer war to conflict, uh, res you know, resolution. And uh, my life has, you know, also been a happy one because I 
still in love with the person I fell in love with uh, so many years ago. Uh, Daniel is as active in in the movement. In fact, he uh, declined to work for a company paying tons of money to work uh, uh, in Lyndon Johnson's uh, war against uh, poverty and, you know, something very fulfilling, something that uh, doesn't make you rich uh, in terms of uh, capitalistic values, but it makes you rich in terms of human values. And, uh, and both of us have spent our uh, uh, entire life uh, trying to change the things that we thought were not in the best interest of human beings. Uh, we continue this. Uh, in, in fact, I was uh, this year, my annual school visits in Germany was actually canceled. Uh, because they uh, Germany, because of its uh, horrible history, is has a great deal of difficulty uh, criticizing Israel because they do not wish to be considered anti-Semitic. Although it is also uh, the only country that has faced what it has done, it has you know the only country that has taught its young people about the Holocaust or, you know, in an effort to prevent future Holocausts, you know, something that America fails to do and be not book bannings, all of that, you know, reminds me of, of Nazi Germany, you know, when books were burned and uh, banned art was banned and so anyway so if you have questions i can go on <laughs> 88 years of history is a lot is a lot to talk about but i i welcome uh any questions and i can shut up and uh, and answer questions thank you so much marion i'm going to turn it to al and chuck if either of you have any questions to lead us off and meanwhile people uh can start mulling over questions they might have and feel free to put questions and comments in the chat box and i can read them off or you can also use the raise hand feature um, you can click on the reactions button and then click raise hand and if you raise your little zoom hand i'll be able to see that and call on folks um, so, Alan, Chuck, why don't you, if, if either of you have something you want to chime in with, you could kick us off. I, Chuck, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask a, a question to Marion. Fine. What, what gives you hope? Young people and their enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, this year in, in Germany, uh, and as, as I said, I was canceled, but because teachers and students uh, were so looking forward to my visit uh, that uh, the people who canceled it were forced to re-invite me. This year was especially important for, uh, I was told that I talked to more than 5,500 students this year in a, a different school every day for uh, five weeks. It, uh, because of the Israeli-Gaza conflict, students wanted to talk about that subject and I gave them the opportunity and the folks permission to talk about it, to express their opinions and their thoughts about it with, and by telling them that they're not anti-Semitic if they criticize a country that makes a war on people where most of the people killed are innocent human beings and a large percentage are children. And uh, 
I am so pleased that I, uh, in fact, today I got several emails from students of this year. I'm still in touch with students from 10 years ago uh, because they wanted to know what can we do? You know, what can we as young teenagers do to change things? And I said, you know, take the example of Greta Thunberg, stay away from school. The teachers were not very happy when I mentioned staying away from schools. But I said, you can speak up, uh, you know, as long as it is not an, uh, a racist or you know, a, uh, a Semitic or an insult against another human being, your criticism is as valid as anybody else's. So, you know, please, you know, go on the streets, protest for peace. And while we were in uh, Germany, there was a big anti-Nazi rally, very large. And there was also a pro-Palestinian, uh, a day after there was a pro-Palestinian uh, march, which was a bit smaller. I think that uh, I helped students this year to become uh, peace activists because uh, they they like me and they respect me and they think I'm cool. Uh, I was told many times every day that I'm cool and when they get to be as old as I am, they want to be like me. And so therefore, when I tell them to become activists, they think that that's a cool thing to be. <laughs> So uh, I, uh, I think that I am, I'm able to encourage young people because I do not consider myself in any way special or more important than they. I, I consider myself, you know, just I'm stardust i'm part of the human family and uh so are uh, all of these wonderful young people i also encourage all young people here in japan in germany and wherever i talk to young people to share their lessons with people in with women in afghanistan especially but uh, in areas where women are not allowed to go to school anymore because of uh, the oppression of uh, women. And uh, so, we, you know, we are, uh, we are, we live in such dangerous times right now uh, in, in, in the sense that it seems that America likes war. It seems to me that America likes war. I think one of the, uh, my favorite president was LBJ because of his vision for America. And it always pained me because I demonstrated against the war in Vietnam in front of the White House where he resided because I, I, I so appreciated that he seemed to be the only president who had some idealistic vision and this, and wish for America, and you know, try to bring that into uh, reality, uh, and then there was you know, then war entered the picture, and war and uh, politics uh, scuttled what had been. Uh, so gloriously achieved. And as I said, every time I was in front of the White House, which was all the time, and getting arrested, you know, I also sort of mentally apologized to LBJ because I liked what he had done uh, domestically. Uh, Carter is the, was the only president I liked him as well because he was against the uh, military industrial complex and uh, so uh,
Marion, I yeah. have a, a question to to take us back to the, the era of your youth, and I don't know what you're exposed to, but I'm, I'm just thinking about like what was the climate within the Jewish community, or not just the Jewish community, about the whole idea of you know creating the Israeli state. I mean, were there Jews that? that opposed that and were called anti-Semitic, just like there are Jews today that differ from some of the policies of Israel, and then they get labeled anti-Semitic. Do you remember yeah. hearing that kind well, of sentiment in the air back then? Nope. Uh, the, after the war, Zionist groups rounded up children of the Holocaust, and a lot of the children from bergen belsen uh, for example, but children who were also, uh, you know, living in woods and, you know, living in hiding. And we were taken uh, by this group. Uh, there were several, but they were all Zionist groups. Uh, and we were housed in three villas belonging, uh, which belonged to the Warburg banking family. Uh, they had left uh, Germany uh, in 38 or uh, came back after the war. They went to America and one of the sons actually enlisted in the American army to fight Germany. And the, these three villas are on the River Elbe, you know, a very ritzy neighborhood called Blankenese. We are referred to as the children of Blankenese. And uh, there we were for the first time educated, we were uh, loved and respected as human children. And, uh, but I think we were also, when I think back, uh, indoctrinated uh, in a way, uh, you know, uh, for a state, for Jews, where Jews could be safe. So I never, I, I, uh, I was not part of a Jewish community after the war. Uh, my, uh, I, I think that all sort of evaporated. There were no, uh, all of the people that I knew, the Jews I knew had been murdered. So there was no contact with Jews. But in Blankenese, uh, we were, taught Hebrew, we were uh, fed, we were cared for, and we were loved and respected. And I wanted to be part of uh, the founding of a peaceful state where Jews could be safe, but where uh, we would be a country advocating for peace and the opposite of what all of us had experienced. And uh, I wanted to be one of the children that was being smuggled to Palestine to form this new country for us. Uh, I was also one of the, uh, only three children who still had uh, parents, a father and a mother. All of the, most of the other kids were all killed. I had no larger uh, family, but I had my immediate family. So I wanted to go. My parents were not exactly enthusiastic about my going off at age 10 uh, to form a new country, and, and uh, but agreed to a meeting with the Zionist people who were going to smuggle us into Palestine. And I, I remember this so vividly because it was a kind of milestone in my thinking. At one point, one of the organizers of this turned to me and to my parents and said that intelligent young women like me were an absolute necessity for this new state to produce sons. 
at which point uh, all of my um, desire to be part of this new thing that we were going to create went out the window and I turned to the person who said that and I said I don't you know that's not why I wanted to go to Palestine you know I'm not a baby machine I wanted to you know create a world for peace and uh, and you know we were able to go into hiding because of the uh, allied bombing of Hamburg because there were so many any people uh, who had been killed, there were thousands upon thousands of burned bodies all over our neighborhood. And so, and you couldn't identify them. So we were able to uh, go into hiding through the communist underground. And uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so, uh, and so, you know, we were, uh, sent to uh, a place outside of Hamburg, which was our hiding place with a communist elderly couple, uh, the Pimbers, held for our Pimber. Uh, Herr Pimber was tortured by the, by the Nazis in 1933 for his communist activities. Uh, he was so badly tortured that he did not seem human to me. You know, I only ever saw him in the distance. He seemed mm. like a cut-out doll, well, you know, like a paper cut-out doll rather than a human mm. being. Uh, our hiding place was, when when there was nobody around, was a uh, tar paper uh, covered shack. Uh, and our hiding place was... Uh, when there were people around, was an earthen dugout. And on my eighth birthday, uh, we had to hide in the earthen dugout. Uh, I saw that my mother looked very sad, that I could see that, you know, her eyes looked like they wanted to cry. But I also understood why. I knew that, you know, this was my eighth birthday and what she had would have wished for was that I had a cake and mm -hmm. maybe a pretty dress and the party where, you know, family was there to celebrate my eighth year. And instead we were in an earthen dugout, hungry, without food, without cake, without presents. And I said to my mother, if I live, if we live and if we survive and this war ends, I want to become a freedom fighter. I want mm. to fight for peace. Mm. And i not sure that I knew exactly what I had in mind, but I, I think I knew what I wanted to do with my life, mm. kind of. If I lived, I wanted to be a fighter against what I had experienced. I wanted to, you know, use my experience to warn people to resist uh, efforts to redo things. Unfortunately, all of my life, there have been wars. We, we don't seem to learn anything. We resort as a first step always to reach for weapons. America uh, is notorious. Uh, in Europe for its gung-ho embrace of guns. You know, we, we have more guns than we have uh, human beings. We embrace wars. You know, there isn't a war that in my uh, lifetime in America that we have uh, tried to resist and not uh, enter into or, you know, try to fight to uh, make peace. Uh, and uh, and it's very conflicting. The war that I see now, uh, there are so many war, wars. You know, so in Sudan, people are fighting each other. They have, you know, they they eat the same food, they dress the same way, they speak the same language, and they are killing each other, uh, and all for power. Or, and we are. Uh, 
And I think America is partly responsible in not preventing wars, but in uh, helping uh, wars, you know, making wars more, more possible. Uh, we do that in many different ways. I see the war in Gaza uh, and the war on Gaza as a repeat of my childhood. Every day when I see what is being done to people in Gaza, I relive my childhood because that's exactly what Germans did to Jews and uh, Sinti and handicapped people. Uh, but that same uh, oppression uh, that was used uh, during the Holocaust is being used in, in Gaza. Uh, I am also, I think, a very sad and angry Jew because I would think that Jews of all the people in the world uh, should know better, and I think do know better, that they, you can treat people in the way that Israel has uh, treated uh, the Palestinians for decades. Uh, and so it is, for me, uh, more personal than, than, for instance, the war in Ukraine or the war in Sudan. Down, although I think about all of these wars because I'm constantly amazed at the fact that there doesn't seem to be any real strong uh, coordinated effort to not go to war but try to end the war by, by trying to reach some form of dialogue with the people you are you know, you want to fight uh, because um, you may not always be successful, but it's at least something that we need to we need to think about and uh, to do. The uh, the thing about, about Israel and Gaza affects me. I think on on several that resembles my child childhood in Germany, my childhood uh, by, uh, bombing by the Allies, the Americans and the Brits who wanted to kill me, by Germany who wanted to kill me. So three countries wanted me dead, but I, I foxed three countries, I'm still alive. And so this is, you know, something for me to be very happy and joyful about, and I am. Mm -hmm. It, uh, but what is happening in Gaza is for me so personal because also every time Israel has taken the property of a Palestinian, I think of the fact that my the apartment and my grandfather's uh, rare book collection was taken by the Nazis. They just went in and said, "No, you can't have your beautiful apartment." No, your Shakespeare. My grandfather had a first uh, Shakespeare folio. Uh, the Nazis took that. Uh, my parents' apartment, the same thing. They were ousted from their apartment and they were sent to a place that the uh, Nazis deemed, uh, you know, a place for Jews to live in, uh, not where they had lived. And that is what I have seen Israel doing for many, 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 many years. And, and that has always upset me because it reminds me of what was done to Jews. And it is depressing to th think that Jews are doing what Nazis did. And uh, I'm, I've been criticized for making that comparison. And I've been also with, with one of my very dear, dear German friends. She and I had a two and a half hour discussion on, on 
on comparison because she believes comparison not to be uh, applicable. And I think comparisons have to be made so we can understand history and uh, we continue to be uh, loving friends who disagree. And uh, I, uh, I want us as Americans, I want us as human beings to change things. I think, you know, Amer America has gone uh, in the wrong direction, but we could still maybe right uh, that ship and, you know, maybe, you know, go in a direction that is better for the country and better for the climate and better for humanity globally. Uh, but it needs leaders or a revolution of uh, peaceful uh, opponents of war, apartheid, discrimination, and uh, the return of life uh, for Americans uh, in the 50s when I came to uh, America you know, is keep certain people in their place, do not allow them to uh, share uh, what we have as the privileged uh, white uh, uber class. And so it's, it's especially kind of sad. Uh, there were so many, yesterday we were all day at the Capitol demonstrating uh, Netanyahu's invitation uh, to speak uh, to Congress. I was pleased that a hundred uh, people did not attend this, but I was appalled at the standing ovation and the uh, jubilant applause that he got with every lie he said, with every untruths he spoke and that is so akin to how we are uh, have gone in in the direction where we actually consider the possibility that a convicted felon and uh, a corrupt person who never paid a bill, uh, a woman, you know, uh, uh, somebody who has no respect for women can be considered to be presidential material. And, you know, I think I live in a kind of fantasy world where uh, where we have to wake up. In our protests yeah. over the last 10 months, minus the five weeks that we were in Germany, we have talked to thousands of people from all kinds of uh, other countries, from all over the world, from all over this country. People come up, they talk to us. Some are disrespectful and nasty, but most of them want to know why we are there. And we talk. And uh, I would say that at a minimum, 90% are in agreement with our uh, view that we need to stop this war. We need to stop America from funding this war and other wars. We need to start rethinking our way out of war and into directions of dialogue and and peace. But I fear for America because we no longer have the means to uh, be just or truthful because we have politicians to this day 
who uh, insist that the former president is the president who uh, um, Marion Marion yeah may I uh, appreciate your yeah. all of the, yeah, the wealth sorry. of sorry. of your knowledge sorry. and experience and passion uh, I've I've noticed uh, Evelyn has patiently been having her hand raised there oh, for, so for some time. And I know you had said you want to answer questions. Yeah, so uh, Evelyn, Sorry. can you ask ask your question, please? Yeah, I'm not I'm not asking this question as a pro-war or anti-war person uh, question, Marion. And thank you very much for for sharing so much with us. I'm really curious your perspective on World War II. Could it have been prevented? Because we're really talking about trying to prevent war. And I think that World War II is used so much by pro-war people yeah. that this was a war that had to be fought. So it proves that that war is justified in some cases. So I, don't know, I know about the boycott, for example, all over, like in the United States, the, the war veterans for, from World War I, they were boycotting like in March, um, yeah. maybe February, they were in 1943, yeah. they were boycotting in, in also yeah. in Poland. So yeah. I'm really curious to hear your perspective on this. I, th I think uh, that the war could have been prevented. Uh, I really do. I also think uh, that the excuse that this war was fought to free Jews is totally uh, untrue. It, at no time did... Uh, uh, any country uh, go into this war with the idea of freeing Jews from concentration camps. In fact, none of the armies uh, ever uh, so much as uh, threw a bomb at the, the railways that took people to concentration camps. They did not destroy concentration camps. Uh, 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 the Allies, uh, in 1943, when they bombed the civilian section of Hamburg, uh, it, it was uh, a killing of human beings that had no war of uh, aim it had you know it was not against infrastructure or an arm arm silo or anything uh i think that uh norman cousins wrote a book a uh, long time ago called the pathology of power in in which he said that the first world war was brought about by armaments manufacturers germany and Bands were in peace talks, he said in this book. They were in peace talks, and the armaments manufacturers did not want peace. They want war because it's mm -hmm. profitable for them. Mm -hmm. So they went first to one country and said that the other country is arming itself, and so therefore they should do that. And then they went to the other country and said the same thing, and France and Germany went to war. Not uh, as a result of of arguments that they could not uh, straighten out, they were in peace talks, and this was garbled. And I think that peace talks are anathema to some point, certainly armaments manufacturers and everybody who has a stake in that by buying their stocks and, and what have you. So I think had a war been fought for something, for saving uh, millions upon millions of human beings, then that would have been another uh, thing. But because it had nothing to do with saving Jews from annihilation. It, uh, uh, it, it's, 
I think wars are capitalistic and political uh, and very rarely seem to me to have anything to do with just causes, at least as far as, as I look at wars, and I'm not an expert at anything uh, at all. So I'm, I'm just somebody who has observed a lot. So I, I think a war might be justified, maybe. I'm, I'm against war, all sorts of war. I'm against guns, I'm against violence. But if we are going to have a war, then at least an aim has to be that 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 is to save a country, to save human beings. But that is so rarely the case. I, I, I think wars are the province and privilege of the people who rule countries because of, I don't know, maybe it's also because it is this cloak of, you know, power and, and you know, we want to be powerful and uh, um, it's so difficult. And also when you think about, uh, you know, the fact that uh, we have never, as a country, America has not agreed uh, um, to the League of Nations, to the ICC, to the international uh, human rights organizations. We have resisted all of this, I think, to leave the, the avenue always open to make another war, because it seems to me that I think we are a violent country. And I think that as a country, it seems that we thrive on violence. We only have to think of um, people being killed by police, by people killing each other because we make guns, you know, more easily available than, uh, a bottle of, of scotch or something. Uh, anybody can go and get a gun, but you have to be 21 to buy a bottle of whiskey, uh, but you can buy a gun and, uh, and, and use a gun. And, uh, but we also now uh, are in such danger because we uh, don't check uh, politicians who lie. Uh, we, uh, I think we are remiss in our obligation to other human beings. I think the Second World War could have been prevented. I think Jews could have been uh, saved because I think that they are means of doing things. Six of us in 1984, in the autumn of 1984, demonstrated uh, at the South African uh, embassy uh, because we wanted uh, we wanted America to you know do their boycott and divestment etc and there were only six of us for a long time but then it became something that was bigger we had left the country uh, when Reagan was uh, elected uh, the second time because I realized that the country was going backwards instead of forwards, that it had left uh, but, uh, left what I considered to be the finest moment in American history, which was the civil rights movement and all that it had accomplished. Uh, and, but, Peace doesn't seem to be to get rich on wars and on the misery of others. Yes, I think it could have been prevented. 
but that's my opinion. And I'm, you know, I, I, as I said, I'm not an uh, expert on these things, but you know, for my way of thinking, I think there could have been uh, other ways of dealing with it. Uh, and we are back, and so it is. Uh, and we don't learn from history, which is another problem, is that we are absolutely resistant to learning from history. Well, we want and to thank seems... you so much, Marion. We are almost out of time and we just appreciate so, so much everything that you've shared. There's a lot of comments in the chat of people just saying thank you so much. And um, some people saying, you know, they've never heard this, the side of history that you've shared tonight. So we really appreciate you sharing these stories. And um, I want to pass it to Al and Chuck because I know they wanted to make a few final comments as we wrap up. Jack, do you want to say something? And well, I uh, when we were originally kind of talking about this event, you know, we the the original thought was, well, maybe we'll give Marion like fifteen or twenty minutes, and then I had a couple of phone conversations with her, and it's kind of like a like a, a stream that rolls along sometimes slowly and then it gets moving faster and then it pauses and and that's kind of how this went i mean it was it was wonderful it was everything that i could have wanted in terms of just the again the 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 richness and the and the layers of experience that you've had in living and i think it i can't thank you enough it was wonderful to to hear you um and to uh have other people hear you. So thank you very much for your time. So yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, I, I thank you. I thank you. I wanted I wanted to say something also to Evelyn's thing about war. Uh Alfred Krupp uh was a manufacturer of weapons so that Hitler could do the war. He was uh convicted uh by the Nuremberg trials and sent to a prison. The Americans took him out of prison, gave him back all of his money. He was a torturer of 500 Jewish women that, oh, I described that actually in my book. And he had a concentration camp for children. He murdered human beings. America pardoned him after two years gave him back all of his money, and then politicians vied uh, to go to his uh, estates, which were bigger than uh, Central Park. So this is, you know, all this, instead of condemnation of war and criminality, we pardon it. So, sorry. <laughs> and I'm also sorry that I'm rattled today because of, uh, uh, the fact that we had to leave our vigil uh, tonight because we wanted actually to do something really big because Netanyahu was in the White House. So uh, anyway, I enjoyed it. And I apologize for being uh, disorganized uh, and long-winded. My son always, our son always says, you, you, uh, should make your sentences shorter. <laughs> you, you have every right to uh, to share with lots of us your the wealth of your courage and your life and and all of that. I agree with Chuck wholeheartedly about uh, the stream and the, uh, the the witness that you've so. That's thank you so so much. In it together, and together yes. we can change things together by by opening ourselves up to people all over the world to try to make our desire for peace, our desire to end wars, to spread out, to talk to as many people in as many places that we can think of. Because we have to do this, because we cannot go on. Right here. And that's why I think you guys are so important. And I'm in touch with other groups who are also 
working on this and 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 the students I talk with who want to also, you know, because they realize that if they don't stand up for themselves, they're going to get swept under. So peace and love. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And same to you. So, and, you. and uh, as they would say, uh, carry on tomorrow because, uh, because uh, we need you in Washington there to, uh, to continue yeah. the activism and the visibility. And it's, it's been actually encouraging to see on the, the mainstream media, the resistance to Netanyahu um, and the, 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 the people, the hundred, as you mentioned, the hundred members of Congress who didn't show up. Right. Um, and, and that's, that's encouraging, I think, for yeah. those of, for those yeah. of us who aren't there in DC. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and I think we need to take courage from, from each other, because we are, we know that we are in this, uh, fight uh, of our lives and the lives of our, our uh, children and grandchildren and the children of the world. We are responsible in in making the world a better place for the future. And after we talk, we will be going to the Watergate Hotel, where the Israeli delegation is housed in luxury, uh, where we have been every night uh, after our vigil at the White House, we go to the uh, Watergate Hotel. And tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow night, we have a big uh, uh, contingent of us White House vigilers. Uh, we will be going to the Israeli embassy, which we do very often, uh, where people are, you know, ensconced uh, to protest uh, the war, and uh, and we can't sit by and uh, and be silent uh, in in the face of so much brutality and so much. Um, I don't know inhumanity. I just it is to me this is the most inhumane thing I've ever seen. I think because we see so much of it, because uh, the people reporting on it are the people who are suffering, or the people who are losing their children, their mothers, their brothers, their sisters, and so we we are. becoming part of of this particular war because it is so graphic and so in in your face every day that uh uh we can't escape it we have to you know we have we have to we have to stand up for the children of the world we, we just absolutely have to because but what, what Netanyahu has done is he's wiped out the culture of Palestinians in Gaza. I mean, totally obliterated. This is what Hitler wanted to do with Jews, you know, uh, deny their uh, cultural uh, heritage. Uh, this is what the teachers after the war did to me, you know, claiming that uh, we were totally untalented, ungifted, unintelligent, and uh, so I love you guys. Yeah, thank you. The next uh, time we, we love you. Thank you. To get together. Or uh, if I'm in Chicago. Uh, yes, please. We don't know where you welcome. In, yeah, yeah, yes. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I had a book signing in Chicago. And well, I liked, as I told you earlier, you got to get that third book written <laughs> so you can do the circulation. <laughs> okay. So. Well, I can, right. I can I can start working on our books if the wars end because yeah. you know there's so much chaos and I mm -hmm. I I know this is you know not rational but I don't feel right or uh, with myself if I don't protest if I don't mm -hmm. you know if if I sit home and 
say, oh, well, it's too hot or it's raining. Uh, mm. uh, I feel that it is my, my obligation. And, I've, and as a survivor, I have a responsibility to people who are fighting for their survival. Mm -hmm. did, did you say you're going to the Watergate Hotel tonight? Yeah. Yet at, yeah. and it's nine thirty Eastern yeah. time. So. Yeah, yeah, we were there <laughs> pretty late. You know, okay. so they're, they're so. still here. The, the contingent is still here, and uh, so. so we. I would love to, you know, one day talk about politics. We're curious. So, yes. but uh, anyway, if uh, yeah. we keep on fighting, we have we have wonderful examples, you know, from from the past that we can uh, utilize to make ourselves stronger. And I'm just, you know, um, an old woman that I, you know, have for the last. Uh, 80 years been a fighter for peace. And I I need to live a lot longer so that I can actually see peace achieved. Yes. Because all of my life there has been war. We've never yep. lived at a time, none of us have ever lived in a time where the world as a whole was peaceful. Yes. Nor nor in a, in a time when our this country yes. is not behind and supporting wars yes. and funding yes. wars and providing the weapons for war and yes. the propaganda for war and the justification, yes. so called and justification, overthrow, and overthrowing war. governments we don't like. Yep, yep, yep. and and so making you know, well, and then starting. So, anyway, it was lovely. So, Thank well, take, you. Yeah, take thank in you some so hugs much. from Daniel as you go to your next event. Yeah, here, he, he's right yeah. here. Say hi. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. To, thank you. So glad to see you. Can, I don't know whether you yeah. can. It's such a wonderful thing you're doing. It's, it, oh. it, it's very, no, it is very encouraging. We have we have been advocating international uh, uh, action by uh, groups, peace, peace loving groups. And you've already done it. You've already started it. You've got it going. I wish you every, every success possible. Well, and we wish it back, to, back you. to the yes. two of you and back at, and yes. all of all of the people that are out there uh, living life with meaning and gusto like the two of you are. Yeah, important, important. Otherwise, you know, life isn't worth a hoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do some good hoot. All right. Well, if there are. Uh, Mary, we're going to let you go. If you, if you want to stay, we're going to talk about some specific Illinois issues. And Greta, I assume we can continue on the Zoom for yes, 10 yes. minutes or yeah, so. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, Mary, and you're, you can you can stay, but we're going to talk about some, um, as I said, oh, items specific to uh, yeah. to Illinois. What, what, do you, uh, are you guys... Uh, picketing, protesting on on different issues? There, there is very much a group in the Chicago area. We are a statewide organization. So Chuck is in Oswego and Madonna is right. in Joliet. I'm in Champaign. Uh, Julie, I see, is uh, she's in Urbana. Uh, we've got folks from all over the state. Uh, so picketing and protesting in a specific yes, physical yeah. location sometimes is a challenge. And what we're trying to do is support those organizations that are doing things in, in say, Chicago or Springfield or Champaign-Urbana or Rockford, Illinois. Yeah. 
Uh, and we're trying to get them and get the message out. And we're trying to advocate, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, advocate yeah. before you know, to policymakers about, you know, there is a voice. We 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 represent yeah. your constituents in Illinois. Um, so, yeah. yes, but there is a very active group in, in Chicago all the time, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think that's wonderful. I'm uh, connected to various peace groups, uh, mm -hmm. and I would like to get them all, you know, into one part. Yep. Uh, yep. We, we look out our window at the police uh, red lights and flashing lights at the Watergate Hotel where our wow. comrades from this afternoon are, <laughs> are now, so we have to go down and join them. Oh, uh, okay. The cops are still there oh. and the protesters are still there. All right, be safe. Yes. Okay, and be yes, safe, yes. Yes, and let's keep in touch. Thank you okay. very much. And All I right. think uh, by sticking together, uh, we'll eventually achieve uh, better. And I use the civil rights movement as an example of when people stick together, they can achieve something. We just have to learn to be aware of the powers who like to destroy something yes. that is achieved. And peace is one of the things that the powers that be don't seem to appreciate as much as we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, darlings. Okay. Good night to you. Thanks again. And thank you. Thank you. I hope I was not a, too much of a disappointment. I'm a bit bad. <laughs> not at all a disappointment. It's not in that part of the spectrum at all. Okay. So be gentle to yourself, as as, okay. as gentle as you are to the world. <laughs> okay. That's harder for me. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the middle position you're advocating, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes, I think it is also important to be kind to oneself, which I forget once in a while. Okay, Doc. Okay. Peace Thank and you. love. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Peace. Bye. You. Thank you. Well, what were Thank you, Chuck. By the way, and 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 again, Greta for organize for the technical support on this as as usual. Someday, your your children, Greta, are going to grow up and learn how to do this um, on our own, so that we don't need Mother Greta to necessarily be around and help us. But for right now, we're we're still toddlers. Um, <laughs> so, Ed, Chuck, thank you for your continued. Uh, communication with Marion and, and to get her on board. And I know this took some scheduling challenges to get to, to get to this point. So um, what we also wanted to do, and I, I think we have 10 people still on board. Um, and I don't know if who's from Illinois, what I was going to do is share screen a bit um, and go through this, I hope very quickly, if I can, oh boy, now I blew that one. Share screen. Um, where is my PowerPoint? There. And now go to go to there. Does that do it? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, just a, a very briefly. Well, I hope very briefly, uh, Illinois for a World Beyond War is a group of individuals advocating for the prevention of all wars and for ending all existing wars. And as I mentioned again uh, previously, we have these three areas, education, advocacy, and monitoring of media. Um, we also have spent some time uh, talking about um, getting ourselves organized. So we created... Uh, a membership thing. Um, and we have member individual memberships available to Illinois residents. Um, and the, uh, I'm trying to minimize something here. So I can't. Okay. Um, so a tent for the whopping amount of $10, uh, uh, you can join the organization to be a member. Uh, and if you're a student and we won't check for student IDs, 
um, and so on. So if somebody says, well, I'm a student, and I guess in the big picture of life, we are all students. Um, but uh, we hope uh, folks would be willing to put in uh, some kind of commitment of $10 or a dollar or whatever you want to put in. And you can do that by going to that link there. Uh, so we've set this up so that, uh, and we will track who, who puts in the money. Um, so it's not about the money. It's about creating a structure that allows us to then um, elect, if you want to call it that, um, uh, the steering committee to, to make decisions about what positions are we taking if we're advocating for a certain thing regarding, say, for example, nuclear weapons or the war in Gaza or the war in Ukraine or military bases or uh, and, uh, counter recruitment for uh, people when the, the, when the military wants to get all our young people to join, um, those kinds of things. We want to know that the, the membership gives people a voice and, and allows you to say, okay, yes, I support that. So when we bring something up to our general membership, folks can say, yes, I'm, I'm in agreement and I support it. Uh, or if we want to do a letter to the editor or a, an op, an op ed thing in newspapers or, um, a press release or whatever it might be. Um, so I would encourage folks to, if you haven't uh, joined, to go to that website there um, and become a member of the organization. 